Hi friends, it's Dana here. We are back at it. I have my lab coat on and I am ready to do some more at-home experiments. I have my buddy Henrik here to help me out and I have a list of things that we need if you want to do the experiments with us. So it's all about magnets. It's called Magnets Push, Magnets Pull. And it is by David A. Adler and Anna Raff. And here we go. I'm going to give you the list of things to get if you want to follow along. And I have kind of two lists. One is the simpler list, which I think everyone could do. And then there's a few things that are just a bit more advanced. Um, and maybe you might have to buy something for that you can do if you want. So here's the list. And it's also going to be in the description of the video. So the first one is a magnet. <laughs> it can be from your refrigerator or if you have something on your pen or just any old magnet works. That's the first one. You need some canned foods. So it's kind of fun to have a couple different types um, just to try it out. I have two types here. And of course, they're both Bush's canned foods because, you know, I'm kind of a big fan. Hashtag employee. <laughs> also, you need some coins. I have um, a whole bunch of different coins here, so you'll need those. Some paper clips, a handful of them. A glass dish with some water in it. And some paper, just a plain piece of white paper is all you need. That is the basic list, so hopefully you have all of those things at your house. If you want to follow along with just a little more advanced stuff, we have um, some experiments that take two bar magnets. Those are the type that have the north and south pole maybe written on them or is just a long bar type. Henrik, can you hand me one so I can show them what I'm talking about? Thank you. There's a bar magnet. It's a bar. <laughs> Iron shavings, which we got our ours from Amazon, but you can get them just about anywhere. String. I have my garden string here with me. Here it is garden string and also a marker so those that's the complete list that you would need to do everything in this book if you can't do any of them it's still fun to watch so I'm so happy you're here watching with me at the very least so here we go let's be a little scientists and learn about magnets and how they push and pull here we go a world without magnets would be a world without computers, cell phones, televisions, vacuum cleaners, and microwave ovens. It's a magnet's invisible pulling and pushing force called magnetism that helps power all these devices. Magnets are attracted to anything made of iron, steel, nickel, or cobalt, and some less plentiful metals, including neodymium, Neodymium? I think I got that wrong. Neodymium. Hmm. And samarium. That one was easier. <laughs> there are two kinds of magnets, simple magnets and electromagnets. You are probably most familiar with simple magnets, the kind you find in toys or use to hold papers to your refrigerator doors. Do you have a simple magnet? If you do, you can use it as a metal tester but be careful with your magnet. Do not bring it close to a watch, clock, computer, television, or any delicate instrument. It could damage them. Henrik told me not to put one by my phone just a minute ago. <laughs> Smart boy. Test some US coins. So this is where you get your magnet and your coins. Does your magnet stick to any of them? It shouldn't. US coins aren't made mostly of iron, steel, nickel, or cobalt. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters are mostly copper. Here we go. I'll show you what we're going to do here. Henrik, do you have any of those coins? Yeah. Yeah. He's looking. We might have. I hit them under here. I have them. Here's a quarter. That's a nice one. It says Salt River Bay, and it is not magnetic. I'm going to try to stick it here, and it's going to drop. <laughs> Not magnetic. Same with the penny, the dime, and the nickel. None of them are magnetic. Man, that wouldn't have been my hypothesis. Place your magnet on the hood of a car. Does it stick? It should. Most cars are made of steel. Take a few cans from your pantry. 
Get your canned foods, kids. Does your magnet stick to them? It may not stick to some. It may stick to some and not to others. Some cans are made of steel and others are made of aluminum. Here we go, let's try. First thing I'm gonna do is pull out this can. It's some beautiful black bean beanage. We're gonna see if it sticks to this one. Kind of, weakly, sort of does. It pulls, see? Let's see if I go like this. Oh, there it goes for a little bit. <laughs> so that must be a steel alloy. Now let's see if it sticks to this one. It's a beautiful bean dip. There. Nope, nothing. This is an aluminum can. That is why that's not sticking. All right, that was kind of fun. I hope you guys were able to do that too. Next page. Simple magnets come in many shapes and sizes. If you have a magnet of any size, you can use it to test the force of magnetism. This is another experiment with a magnet and paper clips. Pa place a few paper clips on a table or any flat surface. Put the magnet on the same surface about a foot away. Slowly move the magnet toward the paper clips. You're just moving the magnet, but the paper clips will soon be moving too. They'll slide across the table and stick to the magnet. Your magnet's invisible pulling force pulled the paper clips across the table. Well, friends, I have a really cool magnet, just like this one where it's a horseshoe. Do you have that one, Henrik, for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you grab it? I'm going to move my, move my camera. Oh, you have to get pretty close in order for it to work. You all are about to see this. Let me try to put it down here onto the paper. And move this. Oh, camera holder. There we go. Okay, so here's my little magnet. And let me get it closer. I didn't go a foot away, but you see how it pulls to it just as it starts to get close. Let's do that again. Okay, right over here. It's not quite there, but it pulls it to it. See how that magnet pulled? Let's see if you can do that too. Hopefully you have all of those things and you can make that happen. All right. If your magnet is strong enough, it will work through paper, glass, water, or glass. Place a paper clip on a sheet of paper, hold the magnet beneath the paper, Without ever touching the paper clip, you should be able to use your magnet to move it. All right, we're gonna repeat that. This time I don't need to move my camera. Let's see. Here's my paper clip. Aha. Whoop. I'm moving the magnet with the mat with the are moving the paper clip with the magnet. Bye-bye, paper clip. <laughs> And it's still in the magnet. <laughs> All right. With a really strong magnet, you would be able to hold it against the side of the bowl. Oops, I moved ahead. So the next one is drop a few paper clips into a shallow bowl of water. Can you do that, Henrik? Hold your magnet at the surface of the water. If the magnet is strong enough, it will pull the clips through the water. Let's try that first. Henrik's giving it a test for us. Well, let's see. It does a little bit. Oh, let's try the bar magnet. That's a good idea. Henrik, can you take that and maybe go dry it off? Good idea. All right. It's hard to make it a scene here. Oh, look at that. Popped right up. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the next one says. This is the one I was reading before. With a really strong magnet, you would be able to hold it against the side of the bowl and move the clips on the other side of the glass. Now, my magnet doesn't seem to be super duper strong, and so we'll see if we can get this to work. Okay. Oh. It was. It's kind of moving. Was it moving, Henrik? Mm hmm yeah, mine isn't strong enough. Was your magnet strong enough? That is a good question. 
I hope it was. That would be a lot more fun than my magnet that wasn't quite strong enough. Oh, it kind of got it to move here on the outside. You can see that. <laughs> it's wagging its tail. All right. I think we're all set with that. Henrik, do you mind drying this off for me again? Thanks, buddy. Okay, next page. A bar magnet and some iron filings available at most hardware stores or Amazon will help you understand magnetism. Cover your bar magnet with a white unlined sheet of paper. Center the paper over the magnet and sprinkle the iron filings onto the paper and gently tap the paper. All right, we can do this. Okay, Henrik, can you hand me the magnet first? Thank you, and then I will move my camera down again. Here we go. All right, Henrik has some iron filings. You wanna just put them on there? Wow, cool. Shake it, all right, buddy. Shake it a little bit. Okay, I wonder if we could get a little more on there so we could see these poles really nicely. Sprinkle a little more, that's good. Oh yeah, that's really good. Okay, wow. All right, is that fun? Looks like you can see it pretty good. All right, let's see what the book has to say about that. Now look at your iron filings. They should form a pattern, pattern showing the magnet's magnetic field. The pattern shows where the magnetic force is strongest. It's strongest by its two ends where many of the filings should have gathered. That happened to ours, didn't it, Henrik? Yeah. All right. The two ends of the magnet are called poles. Each magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. You can test your bar magnet to see which is the north pole and which is the south pole. Tie a thin string around the middle of the magnet going lengthwise. Tape the other end of the string to the bottom of a wooden bookshelf or table. The string should be just long enough to let the magnet hang freely. Be sure there are no other magnets nearby, nothing made of iron, steel, nickel, or cobalt, nothing to confuse the magnet. Gently tap the magnet. When it stops moving, one pole should be pointing north and the other south. Ask an adult which direction is north. With a marker, write N on that end of the magnet. Write S on the other end. We're going to skip this one, friends, but if you want to try this out yourself, it is that is when you use the string and the bar magnet and the marker. The marker is just for marking north and south. So if you wanna try that out, hit pause and try it out on your own. Sailors, hikers, pilots, and others use compasses to help them find their way. The needle inside a compass is really a magnet. One end of the needle always points north. Look at any globe. The most northern part of the globe is labeled North Pole. The most southern part of is labeled South Pole. The poles of every magnet always point north and south because the earth is a huge magnet with relatively weak magnetic field. Its magnetic pole is the strongest at its two ends, its north and south poles. With two bar magnets, you can see how north and south poles attract and repel each other. We have two bar magnets. Henrik, can you clean off that one and hand it to me? We aren't gonna use this string, but I can kind of show you this. The poles of bar magnets are often marked north and south. If yours are not, you can test them by letting them hang freely, tapping them, and then seeing which way each pole points. Then mark both ends of each magnet with a north and south. Place both magnets on, any, on a table or any flat surface. Place them at least a foot apart. Line them up with one pole with one pole of each magnet facing the other. Slowly move each magnet towards the other. If you have a north pole moving towards a south pole, you'll feel a strong magnetic attraction between the magnets. The pole of one will stick to the pole of the other. Opposite poles attract each other. 
Let's give that a try. All right, ours are both marked south and north and they're colored. And so in what they just suggested, they wanted us to put two different poles together. Let's see what happens. Yes, they were happy and they're kind of sticking. Not real hard because these are not strong magnets, but look at that, they are stuck together. <laughs> Those are opposite poles which attract. All right. The only, um, the only natural magnet is lodestatrone, a stone loaded with magnetite, a magnetic mineral. Other magnets are man-made. I am going to show you what happens when I put the same pole together, because the book didn't tell me to do that, but I'm gonna do it. Oh, I can't even put the ends together because the um, they're repelling each other so much. I can put them together like this, because they're, they're kind of weak, but I cannot put the ends to end together. Wow, huh? Sames do not attract, evidently. You can make a magnet. Take a large steel paper clip and hold it close to some iron filings. If the filings don't stick to the clip, you know that the clip is not magnetic. Henrik, are our paper clips magnetic? Can you tell? Nope, they are not. This is how we do it. Now take your bar magnet, start with one pole of the magnet pressed against one end of the paper clip. Rub it along the clip to the other end. Do this again and again, 25 to 30 times. Rub the same pole of the magnet against the clip, always in the same direction. Hold the paper clip close to some iron filings. Does the clip attract the filings? If it does, the paper clip is now a magnet. Let's give this a try. I'm gonna do it just like they show me with the north end of the pole. So let's see. Henrik's doing his over there. That was 20. All right, that was 30. Let's see. Henrik, can you put a handful of um, shavings in your hand? Let's just see what happens. Bring it up to the camera, right up here. Oh, I'm gonna tip it just a little bit. Oh, it's stuck. That is so cool. We just made our own magnet. Yay, thanks Henrik. <laughs> Very cool. Magnets can lose their magnetic power when they are hit really hard or exposed to extreme heat. Magnets can also multiply. When you break a magnet in half, you create two smaller magnets, each with, each with a north and south pole. Electromagnets, sometimes called on and off magnets, use electricity to create their magnetic field. When an electric current passes through a wire, it creates only a weak magnetic field. Wrapping a wire with an electric current flowing through the wire, the more turn um, through it and, okay, I'm sorry. Wrapping a wire with an electric current flowing through it and on an iron rod turns the rod into a magnet. The tighter the coils of the wire, the more turns, and the stronger the electric current, the stronger the magnet. If the electric current is turned off, the electromagnet loses its power. That's why they're sometimes called on and off magnets. Electromagnets are used in buzzers and bells, computer televisions, and many other electric devices. They power all electric motors. You can't see magnetism, but you can see what it does. It's difficult to imagine a world without magnets. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed that book. There's a glossary in the back, and I hope you were able to do a couple of the experiments with us. And if you weren't, I hope you enjoyed seeing them being demonstrated by my buddy Henrik and I. Thank you so much for reading with me. Reading creates thinkers, and thinkers are the best kind of humans around. See you see later, scientists. <laughs>